when I first saw these uh, judges giving out the sentences to the writers and also people who made posts on social media, it brought back a horrible, horrible memory, uh, which I'll share with you in this particular video. But at this point, you need to understand that we all have responsibilities. And when it comes to working in, and playing in, in a system, we need to really be accountable to ourselves, accountable to God, that we are doing the right thing. Now, it's clear that Stasi Starmer has politicized the judiciary in such a way that is unrecognizable for being British. It's horrific. It really is horrific. Uh, the way in which these judges are carrying out their work, it reminds me of something which I'm very concerned about. But before I go into stuff, let's just have a listen to what this guy's got to say. Oops. You have been committed for sentence, having pleaded guilty to an offence of publishing written material, which is threatening, abusive or insulting, intending thereby to stir up racial hatred. On the night of the 2nd and 3rd of August, the Britannia Hotel in Leeds was attacked by people who, who threw missiles, which damaged windows. The police were called and on the 3rd of August, the hotel was locked down for the protection of those who were living there. At the time, there were 210 occupants, many of whom were foreign refugees and asylum seekers. I mean, at this point, the description which is given, you give the idea and the impression that the guy who was in the dock was actually physically there, physically a part of this particular aggression and violence. Similar attacks to the hotel were launched on the 4th of August. The police attended on each occasion and units were deployed to safeguard the hotel and to provide an increase in the police presence in the area. In between the two attacks, you took to social media in order to encourage others towards participation in the attacks. Okay, so it, this reminds me of when I was a boy, with a little child, and I'd done something very stupid. And when I was asked by the adult, and I'm telling you, the adult, why did you do that? And I, like a child, would say something like, well, Bobby told me to do it. Bobby told me to do it. To which the stock answer from the adult would be, if Bobby told you to jump off a bridge, would you do that? Would you jump off a bridge? Point being, that we have to hold ourselves accountable for the actions that we do. Those rioters going after in that hotel after those migrants, clearly in the wrong, clearly up to overly criminal activity, clearly going on the wrong side of the law here. Okay. The question is the incitement by the guy posting a tweet. Are we to say that because he posted that tweet, those people who were writing read that? tweet as some sort of instruction from above. Upon the hotel, the initial post received six likes. However, it was sent to your 1500 Facebook friends and because of your lack of privacy settings will have been forwarded to friends of your friends. <clears throat> The messages were therefore spread widely, which was plainly your intention. 
in response to a post questioning why you wrote because they're over here so i'm glad that the um judge has actually given a clear explanation from somebody who's been doing this sort of writing as to the reason d'etre for this post for the guy's anger and please in the comments can you comment what you think of this guy's posts um, yeah, yeah, if you, yeah, please don't be afraid I'm having to be fix this by saying please do not be afraid to give your point of view given the life of Riley off the tax us hard working people earn when it could be put to better use come over here with no work visa no trade to their name and sit down and dos and then there's more people being put out homeless each year they get top band priority on housing and many more reasons. You were arrested in the early hours of the 5th of August and then interviewed by the police. Your motivation became clear when you informed the police that you had promoted the idea of attacking the Britannia Hotel as a result of anger and frustration at immigration problems in the country. Promotion to or incitement of violence is always wrong. There's no getting away from that. <laughs> There's no getting away from that. To, you know, to incite somebody to do so, to egg on, that is it's criminal activity. That much I will say. Just carry on. You went on to say that you did not want your money going to immigrants who, quote, rape our kids and get priority, end quote. Oh, this offence is so serious that an immediate custodial sentence is unavoidable. We so this offence is so serious that a custodial sentence is unavoidable. The offence is so serious. Let me give you some sort of context here. You see, you got the CEO of the post office who lied to everybody, lied in court, yeah, contempt of court, lied to government circles and government hearings, inquiries, okay, that she didn't know about the Fujitsu uh, computer. And, and the post office funds. She told outright lies. And as a consequence of those lies, people committed suicide. They committed, they, how can I say, unlived themselves. Yeah, they unlived themselves as a result of her actions. Other people were sentenced into prison. And she was fully aware of it based on the testimony of what she was saying. Now, you tell me what is worse, that guy and his tweet, or what she did, because that woman hasn't even been charged with any criminal offence yet, and perjury must be one of them. Yeah, I don't know how you would feel if any of your relatives unlived themselves, unlived themselves because of a lie perpetuated by somebody who knew what the truth were, but was more concerned about covering up her tracks, okay, and making herself look good like a big CEO ought to be, yeah, and telling the truth. You see, there's no balance here in the law. What we've got here is a class thing going on at the same time, yeah? So this lady, I can't remember her name now, she of a different class, money class, middle class. So her punishment is she is persuaded under duress to give up her knighthood. That's the punishment. People have died as a basis of her actions. People have been imprisoned on the basis of her actions. 
But there's no judge like this guy here saying that the gravity of what she's done deserves a custodial sentence. Man, she didn't even get a parking fine. Not even a parking fine. Let's continue. Could you stand, please? The sentence that I pass has been reduced by one third to reflect your guilty plea. The sentence is one of 20 months imprisonment. You will serve up to one half of your sentence in custody before you are released in li on license. Okay, so that's his sentence, what he's getting. Yeah, way out of order. But let's, uh, let's, let's move it on a bit, shall we? Let's go. Let's go to the next situation. Okay, so we all know about this particular instance. Uh, very interesting how the CCT footage, when it came out, it wasn't shown in chronological order. For some reason, they decided that they were going to show the second half of that incident first. Maybe because the gravity of it all, but they got those prints and they're scared. Now, as a result of those, there were mass demonstrations outside the police station. Yeah. These guys are, to the best of my knowledge, they haven't been arrested. They have not been charged. Now, those rioters who we saw in the first part, they, they were sort of arrested and charged and sentenced within four days. This has been going on for over two weeks now. These guys haven't been charged. Their crimes, or alleged crime, has been blasted nationwide. Nationwide. Not only have they not been charged, that the police officers, one of the police officers is being under review for their own career for his response in that situation. Remember, these are armed police. At any point, if anyone jumped on top of them, took their weapons, the consequences could have been absolutely severe. They had no way of knowing who these people were and what their intentions were when they first came to the incident because they didn't just turn up there they turned up there because there'd been some sort of instance prior. And yet these guys are going in press conferences acting like a victim. Yeah, like a victim. Wandering the streets, not even arrested. They've assaulted and, and, and GBH, grievous bodily harm, to one of the uh, police women. No problem. No problem at all. Okay. The other thing is that so I, I, you know what what we've got here is a political judiciary, and this is what I'm very concerned about. This is very very un-British. We are in terra incognita when it comes to Stasi Starmer, because when you have a politicized judiciary who are just doing the government's bidding. Many people are afraid. I think there's lots of people afraid. People don't know what to do, what to say at this moment in time. Yeah? There's like a terror going on. This is only five weeks into Stasi Starmer's um, administration. And we need to be aware. I said this in my last video, but we need to be aware that Hitler came in through democratic views, it means, yeah. It wasn't, a, you know, it wasn't a coup, it wasn't violence. He was voted in. Hitler was voted in, and from being voted in, he just rearranged the furniture, changed the laws to secure his place. This is what's going on at the moment with the Labour Party in regards to coming up with laws, silencing those who are in the middle of the road or slightly to the right of centre. Okay, just general conservative people with a small C. Yeah, he's politicised it in the narrative so that they are being labelled and othered. That's the word. They've been othered. Yeah, 
And then once they've been othered, he can then do whatever he wants with them. When you get that politicization of the judiciary, you get this, what I would call, Roland Frizzler effect. Watch. August 1944. The first resistance trials began. Hitler orders them filmed and shown to troops and civilians as a warning. Technicians plead with the presiding judge, Roland Freisler, not to shout. They cannot record the sound properly. Freisler, ex-Bolshevik, admirer of Vyshinsky, is a rabid Nazi. The Gestapo has done everything to break the defendants. Once proud Field Marshal Erwin von Witzleben has his false teeth taken from him. Is not permitted to wear a belt or suspenders. Carl Gertner, who would have been head of state had the resistance succeeded. He was once mayor of Leipzig. <laughs> Ulrich von Hassel, Resistance Foreign Affairs Advisor. Hitler had dismissed him as German ambassador to Italy. Adam von Fratzusorz, member of the intellectual Kreisau Circle, once a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford. Kauschwarin von Schwanenfeld, liaison between the military and civilians and the resistance, former aide to Witzleben. He dares to mention Nazi murders in Poland. General Erich Hefner, a brilliant tank commander sacked by Hitler after the battle for Moscow. I think, the verdict is as expected, death for all. We don't want Roland prisoner type courts. We don't, you know, the difference, you know, that, that Roland Frisler, that Nazi judge, was acting the way he did because of the plot, I think the July plot against Hitler and the bombs. Those people were tried, I think, in any country they would be tried, if you like. But as we all know, yeah, that was a show trial. Yeah, that was a show trial. And uh, we don't do show trials. Or up until this point, Britain hasn't done show trials. We don't want to go down that route. We do not want to go down that route of having show trials. Yeah? Pushing through political ideology in the judicial system. Yeah? We don't, we, we don't want to do that. We are bigger than that. We don't want to go down that route and people who are participating in that you've got to ask yourself you really got to ask yourself are you complicit are you part of this are you part of the problem here you've got to take accountability and I'm talking about just not just members of the public but I'm talking about the police the two-tier policing I'm talking about the legal system I'm talking about across the board, you know, obviously the media. Yeah. You've got to ask yourself, are you part of this? Are you a part of the problem? That's it, guys. Um, that's all I've got to say. Uh, over and out. Yeah. <laughs>